Sonic, the heart of your system. I'm Leo Ward of Kit Guru. I'm back from New York, back from the Intel 9th Gen launch, and I have this box. And inside this box, I have a lesser box. And inside that was a CPU, but it's elsewhere. Because to the best of my knowledge, it is still under NDA to show images of the uh, Core i9, Core i7, Core i5 processors. Even though they look exactly like every other Intel processor you've ever seen, well, for the past five years at any rate. But nonetheless, I'm going to play nice. So uh, I've got some packaging, which is nothing like the really swanky uh, retail packaging we saw at the event and we've seen uh, elsewhere. Uh, which is obviously Intel's repost to Threadripper with the sort of great big plastic casing. Uh, so as to what actually comes inside that retail packaging, if there's anything beyond the CPU, no clue. Threadripper, of course, you get uh, a bracket for an Ace Tech liquid cooler and also a little sort of Torx wrench you require, a little um, Torx uh, setting in it. Uh, as to whether the Intel uh, retail packaging has anything in it or not, I have no clue. I know my cardboard box just has a processor. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to rattle through Intel's uh, press release and just give you my views as a chap who's on the spot. You may or may not have watched the live streaming event. Uh, as it happens after the event, I did a piece to camera there. I was working on my own and uh, I was defeated by Panasonic's uh, autofocus. Uh, so uh, it didn't come out at all well, so I didn't bother putting that up. Uh, but the fact of the matter is my thoughts then weren't fully formed. Uh, they're still not entirely formed uh, as I've yet to start benchmarking the process you will understand that right now we're not allowed to discuss performance whatsoever even though there's been a whole furore about uh, Intel commissioning some uh, benchmarking from a company called Principal Technologies uh, they compared a bunch of processes including the new Skylake X uh, which isn't coming out I believe till November so that's early early stuff and they were comparing the Intel processors with AMD processors and demonstrating that Intel is the world's best, or has rather, the world's best gaming processor, i.e. the i9-9900K. There are a number of ways that you can analyse any data provided by any manufacturer about any product. And as Principal Technologies was commissioned by Intel, this is Intel stuff. That's just all there is to it. Uh, and you have to remember, this report was published before the NDA has lifted for reviews, so nobody can contradict the report at this moment in time. Uh, so, for example, they used Noctua coolers on the AMD Threadripper CPU and all the Intel CPUs, but the uh, AMD Ryzen 7 2700X uh, was used with the AMD Wraith Prism cooler because that cooler comes with that CPU. So that would appear to be a, a curious point of difference. Similarly, the choice of 64GB of DDR4 memory. 64 gigabytes in a gaming PC, on the one hand, that's a lot of memory. On the other hand, it's not representative of what goes on. And you can go around a number of points like that. But the big one, the really big one, is that for AMD processors, uh, they used AMD Ryzen Master software and enabled game mode. That cuts the number of cores in half. So the 2700X was a quad-core CPU, which is just bonkers. There is no legitimate reason for doing that, and it must have hurt the 2700X. It may make sense on a Threadripper, on the uh, big 32 core, for sure. But the 2700X in quad-core mode, that's not right. But weirdly, even though that's a massive point, it's a detail. The biggest point is, if you go down Intel's uh, how we do benchmarking and get reports and such like uh, disclaimer, we see this, and this is a, a slightly abbreviated version. Principal Technologies Benchmark Disclosure. This on an Intel web page. Intel is a sponsor and member of the Benchmark XPRT or Expert Development Community. Principal Technologies is the publisher of the expert family of benchmarks. So basically, forget everything that's gone before. This is information that's been published, commissioned and published by Intel. Therefore, you'd be crazy to make any uh, take any heed of it whatsoever. Uh, and the fact it's been published before the NDA is lifted, therefore I cannot do the same benchmarks and publish my own results. Just park it. Forget about it. It's totally irrelevant. It's frankly dubious, but you shouldn't even be concentrating on these numbers. You should simply push them to one side and forget they ever existed. Now, the fact of the matter is, I don't think any of us actually dispute. I said before I went in my Leo says that I was quite sure the i9-9900K was going to be the world's best gaming processor. 
But of course it costs, as I estimated, £600, and it turns out it costs £600. So you can say, well, the process is that much, the motherboard's that much, memory's that much. Against that, you've got the uh, Ryzen 7 2700X. How much do I pay for your frame rate? And, you know, value for money comes into it. So it may be, in and of itself, the world's best gaming processor. Or you might want something completely different. You might want a Skylake X, potentially. It's a bold claim. It may well be completely true. But in commissioning that testing, which other websites have already really had a good go about, uh, uh, with reason, um, Intel may have pushed their luck a little bit. Now, the fact of the matter is that during the presentation, most of the present or most of the things in the presentation, not the presentation itself, have been leaked over the weeks before. And as I said, Malia says I did before I went. Uh, so we knew about the i9, i7 and i5. Uh, there were no surprises there whatsoever. It was slightly disappointing. Intel didn't go on to actually give us more information. For example, Coffee Lake has six cores, the 8700K. Have they managed to get eight cores in this, what is apparently Coffee Lake refresh? Although I didn't hear it called that it's still 14 nanometer plus plus there's no gain on the fabrication process how have they got the extra two cores into that processor no mention whatsoever uh, have they simply squeezed them in a bit tighter or have they had to move things around a tad no clue i didn't see any uh, shots of uh, the block diagram that were of any use whatsoever uh, and certainly I didn't see the actual die itself. We did see a wafer, but the wafer the guy was holding up uh, could have been any wafer. We're told it's a wafer for the i9s, but who knows? It's a wafer, it's shiny, it's a swined photograph, it's basically a mirror, and it's got some little squares all over it. Um, great, I mean, very pretty. We're used to those uh, seeing those wafers. Uh, I'd love to have one on the wall. Not going to happen, but... Uh, that was as close as we got. So in terms of technologies and technicalities, there was there were gulfs. Now, in a sense, because I'm going to have to start benchmarking very soon, I'm quite happy that there are things to discover, but there were, there were obvious gulfs that were just unnecessary. So let's rattle through the press release, which essentially comes under three areas. So we've got the desktop processors, we've got Core X series, and we've got the Xeon W3175X which is a snappy name. That's the 28 core processor. 28 cores, it's obviously a Xeon. It appears to be identical to the Xeon 8180, except it's unlocked and it goes faster and it goes up to 4.3 gigahertz. Now, how many cores will go that fast and what the all core speed is? Clearly less. Will it even be four gigahertz? I doubt it. 3.5, 3.6 would be my estimate. The point there being is it's way off five gigahertz which was the figure that it hadn't been promised had it but it was you know you could overclock that and you could rip through a Cinebench R15 which takes but a moment with a processor like that uh, nothing like that was in fact I don't think the Xeon was even on show uh, but anyway the Xeon was shown in a picture and that was fine no mention of pricing I believe it's coming it was coming for the end of the year uh, that's the point or, or there maybe was some fudging to do with shipping from Intel at the end of the year so maybe not in people's hands as for pricing pick a number the Xeon 8180 is 10 grand uh, so this is better than that because this is unlocked and goes faster so it should be more money well that's a thing isn't it can you imagine a processor costing more than 10 grand no of course you can't can you imagine a processor costing five grand for a gaming system not really if it's five grand on the other hand and better than the 10 grand Xeon well, what's that all about? Is there some little bit that Intel can uh, disable, which means it's not going to just kill the Xeon market at the high end? Don't know. You'd think they want to do that because they want this to be for, you know, super duper gaming systems or you know, benchmarking at any rate. Uh, pricing, therefore, I mean, it, in a sense, whether it's five grand or ten grand kind of don't matter because it's all crazy. But uh, keen to know. Uh, also, two motherboards. Uh, so the fact it's called Xeon is interesting. It's not Core or i11 or whatever. It is a Xeon. And then there are two motherboards for that. The ASUS ROG Dominus. Uh, good name, ASUS. We like that. And the Gigabyte SKL SP1S. 1S because it's single socket. Uh, not so hot Gigabyte. You need to work on your gaming products. The point being is, of course, they're not gaming products. They're awesome workstation boards that support a 28-core Xeon. Uh, and they will presumably do that job very nicely. Uh, as to how many boards are ever going to sell, how many of these processors will Intel sell? Will there be a product stack? 
My guess is no. My guess is you're going to get the Core X up to 18 core and you're going to jump to 28 core. I don't think there will be a 24 core version of this Xeon, although I'd like to see that, and a 22 core and a 20 core. I think there's going to be the flagship and that will be it. And then we have the desktop processors. So we've got i9 9900K, we've got i7 9700K, we've got i5 9600K. Everything we thought we knew, we did in fact know. Uh, pricing has been confirmed in the UK at £600 for the i9, £500 for the i7, which is blooming steep but still, and the i5 at £350. So they are expensive. Now, in a way, that uh, we knew those prices would be about those areas, so what can you say except the... Uh, I think the i7 is a bit higher than I thought it might be. So damn expensive. Compared to AMD, really, really expensive. Uh, these have just been priced relative to how Intel prices its processors and, you know, damn the competition. So in a sense, fair play to Intel, but blimey. And then we've got the uh, Z390 motherboards, which, uh, the chipset rather, which uh, it seems to bring nothing to the party over Z370. So obviously you need to see how the Z390 motherboards, of which I got a stack elsewhere uh, will marry up particularly with the i9 9900k hopefully the the, the 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 better board should certainly do the power correctly and we should have superb results I, i'm quite confident it's going to work well also the soldered tim uh, intel is calling stim s tim uh, don't much like that name uh, they were asked by uh, someone in the q a when did you decide it'd be a good idea to start soldering your cpus or more accurately soldering them again and the response came or when it, when did you decide that tim wasn't a good idea was the actual question and the response was uh, we thought it was time to solder them or it's a good time to solder something like that it's like, oh. Okay. Intel was also asked about turbo speeds for the new desktop processors. So if you take the i9 9900K, the base speed 3.6 gigahertz, single core turbo frequency 5.0 gigahertz, obviously quite a gulf, but that's, you know, one core. Well, what about all eight? What speed will they run at? You know, 4.5 gigahertz potentially. Intel's response, nah, we don't give that information. And they kind of implied they don't check it either, which just cannot be the case. But they don't give it. So if my processor, for example, runs all core 4.5 and yours runs 4.3 or 4.6, that's all true, isn't it? I mean, it's in that colossal range, 3.6 being obviously hopelessly slow, but that's the base speed, and 5, well, it's not going to run at 5 on all cores out of the box, that's just not going to happen. What I'm absolutely certain of, however, is that the TDP of 95 watts is not going to allow that processor to run to any useful speed. It is the same TDP, and we knew this as well, for the i9, i7, and i5, and that's just blooming silly. Now, this actually slightly annoys me. This is this thing of you put a figure down for TDP and it means nothing. If Intel is saying they want us, myself included, to benchmark the i9 900K with the bias locked to 95 watts and not a drop more, I'll do it, but I don't think any of us would enjoy the results. If they're saying in standard mode on auto, not overclocking, just on auto with XMP enabled, I can expect to see pick a figure, uh, 140 watts for argument's sake, uh, then absolutely fine. In that case, as far as I'm concerned, that is the TDP. If there or, or some number, put, put a term on it, standard operating power, if you like. But 95 watts, I'm certain that that means absolutely nothing because if it does mean something you ain't going to see the same figure for the i5 the i7 and the i9 that's just silly and i think it's time that we actually grew up a little bit and started putting figures on these specs that actually mean something we've also got the core x now this was leaked on the morning of the event what intel appears to have done is taken the skylake x parts that run on x299 chipset and given them a 9 number at the start. So they're i9-9 rather than i9-7. Uh, and that seems to be it. So the top notch part is now the i9-9980XE. 18 cores, 2 grand in the UK. Uh, 16 core, 1400. 14 core, 1200. 12 core, 1100 and a few pounds. 10 cores, 1100 pounds. The thing is, there are actually two 10 core models, the uh, i9-9900X and the i9-9820X, uh, the difference being speeds. Uh, in terms of uh, TDP, all, oh, there's one junior version as well, which is i9-9800X. 
All the models are now 165 watt TDP. Previously, the uh, junior versions were slightly lower, 140 watts of memory, and they've been sorted out in terms of PCI Express. Uh, they're not being crippled now at the lower end, but uh, it would appear that you get a slight speed bump, say 100 megahertz here and 200 megahertz there, but this is, as far as I'm aware, a tweaked Skylake X. It's not Cascade Lake or anything like that. It's the same. The, the the absence of information apart from feeds and speeds and such like was bewildering to behold. Uh, you just heard nothing about technology whatsoever. So to wrap up, if we start at the top and work our way down, Intel's put a name on the 28 core part, Xeon W3175X. Uh, I'm surprised by the lack of catchiness in the name, but there we go, and it's a Xeon. The thing is, it's obviously intended to compete with the 32 core Threadripper, and it may well do so. Uh, six uh, channel memory may well give it an advantage over Threadripper, which um, uh, has this bizarre thing with four dies going on where two access memory and two have to step through other uh, dies to get there. So it is quite possible the 28 core Intel will, depending on how you're working, beat the Threadripper by some metric, which after all is the only reason it exists. The pricing is bound to be crazy. The price of those two motherboards that we saw, they can't be cheap. They're proper workstation boards, and goodness knows how much it's cost a Zeus and Gigabyte to develop them, presumably assisted by Intel. But nonetheless, it ain't gonna be cheap. Six channel memory obviously costs more than quad channel memory, and so on and so forth. Whereas you can get the Threadripper by going out and buying, I've got a few boards on the shelf that support it. You buy a board for, three to five hundred pounds you plonk in your processor you've got a 32 core thread ripper you're good intel's clearly having to come up with something stratospheric in order to attempt to compete but that's the reason they're doing this so at one level i want to see this at another level i know it doesn't really matter but it will be interesting to see what it does if we get our mitts on one that's the top end we then step down to the new core x parts and we're mildly disappointed. Uh, so in, in the sense it's X299 chipset, that's good. Obviously when X299 launched, uh, there were issues to do with cooling and such like. Uh, I think the VRMs and the VRM cooling is now better understood uh, when you're overclocking that is and you're unlocking the power. The fact that you get a tiny amount of extra speed because they've tweaked bits here and there is of not a lot of interest. I would be amazed if the i9 9980XE is significantly better than the 7980XE, for example. I might be wrong but I'd be truly astonished uh, so the fact they're moving from the 7 series to the 9 series okay uh, it is also just noteworthy that Intel appears to be running out of model codes and that, I mean I can't see them going to uh, tens because that'd be an extra digit so presumably they've got some other numbering system up their sleeve for a year's time uh, so the core X series uh, Intel gave it very little attention and, and I can only return the favour and give it equally little uh, attention. And then we have the desktop parts. The Core i9 with 8 cores, 16 threads, that is bound to be a monster unless Intel's managed to really get it wrong badly somehow. I'm quite confident that processor will storm along. Uh, I, on the other hand, cannot see it offering good value for money. So it'll be interesting to see exactly how nuanced the conclusion is about that processor. But Intel announces world's best gaming processor. I'm going to say, yeah, very possibly. In fact, quite likely. But there will be caveats. The i7 9700K, the eight cores without hyperthreading, I don't have one of those. I want to see one of those because that processor ought to be very interesting. But at £500 against £600 the i9, that's not cheap enough. Saving £100 on the system, really, I need to save more than that. On the other hand, had it been 450 that would obviously be better, but it, you know, it's not night and day. So the i9 would seem to be the obvious processor to go to. The i7 for a bit less money... Uh, and half the threads, perhaps it's a bit of a sort of a weird old duck. And then the i5 9600K, six cores, six threads. <sighs> that, that That's a funny thing again. I mean, £350, uh, it's replacing the current i5. Again, I want to see how that one performs, but again, until I actually get my mitts on it, I really can't tell. So it's a very curious product stack. There'll obviously be more products coming along that fill in gaps and such like but they are each very distinct processors. Uh, you do not, as we understand it, require a Z390 motherboard, but it might well be for the i9, you want one in order to provide the correct amount of power for that processor, because the 95 watt TDP, 
that figure is not going to in any way reflect what you actually need to feed the processor to perform correctly. And as they're saying, a single core will boost to uh, 5 gigahertz. We want to see all the cores boost to 5 and beyond. It's a soldered processor. It's got stim. And we want to see that absolutely hooning away at high clock speed. Uh, so I'm going to crack on with that very shortly. So the launch was interesting. There's been a lot of controversy about the metrics and how the performance testing was done by uh, Intel's uh, paid testing people. Uh, the smart move, the worst things I always find, is just to ignore the benchmarks. After all, they're not going to publish benchmarks that demonstrate the competition is better. That would be daft, or that the older processors are better. That would be equally daft. So if we just push all that to one side, we've been to New York, we're back, we've got a sample, we're good to go. Onward. If you like this video, give it a thumbs up. Look around, you'll find a bell button somewhere that means you can subscribe to our videos. I'm Neil Wood for Kit Guru. I've got a Core i9, and you probably haven't.